Hello, everyone, and welcome to Daily Newspaper Analysis, which is brought to you by Law Seco. Today, we have two articles for our discussion. The first one is from the Indian Express, which is titled as Rags to Rags. So basically, this article talks about the wake of increasing inequalities in the Indian society, especially in the wake of COVID-19. So which all areas of the Indian society have seen significant inequalities uh, driven through the COVID-19 will be discussed and the way forward shall also be discussed in this article. The second one is from the Hindu newspaper, which is titled as Evolution and Framing of the Constitution. So as recently we celebrated the Constitution Day, which was on 26th of November. So in the wake of that, we had a grand event to celebrate the framing of the Indian Constitution. So the long journey has been discussed here. And as to which all areas uh, have been laid with the maximum responsibility have been discussed over here. So this newspaper analysis is presented by me. My name is Sheva Khan. I am a BA LLP law graduate and I have completed my law degree from Uttaranchal University in the year 2019. I completed my graduation with a gold medal in my batch and I have also been a national debater as well as a public speaker. Here at Law Seco, I'm working as an expert for current affairs and I'm also managing the current affairs vertical. Let's see what is the multiple choice question from our previous discussions. Ujwala Yojana is associated with, your options are LED bulbs, LPG connections, nutrition, or none of the above. You can write down your answer in the comment section below. This is the descriptive question for the day. Discuss the most important events that led to the framing of the Indian constitution. Also enumerate the most important personalities that played an important role meanwhile. With this, let's discuss the first article of the day, which talks about rags to rags, basically increase in the inequality. So first thing that we need to notice over here is that it is not for the first time that the Indian society has faced any kind of inequality. This system of inequality has existed since time immemorial. But yes, of course, after the COVID scenario, this inequality or these inequalities basically have increased many fold in our society. So COVID has further deepened the inequalities in income distribution and social mobility. Now here by income distribution, of course, we mean that how much income does an individual have in hand? And by social mobility, we mean that we mean that how much opportunity or the level of opportunity that an individual has to make himself better or to move to a better step. Like for example, when people they move from uh, you know the villages to the urban areas in search of better life better standard of living better earnings jobs education etc this is basically not only just their physical mobility but also a social mobility wherein they have their chance to stand or to raise the standards of their living so similarly the social mobility that we had you know uh, there has been inequalities in that as well now so let's understand that what is the present situation. The Indian inequality is mainly attributed to the factors of consumption, income and wealth. So the people are not even, or even consuming you know, equally. Now here we are not only discussing about the food as a consumption thing, but also various other resources, you know, be it the natural resources, the government facilities, be it anything. So the consumption is not equal. Definitely the income is not equal, which ultimately leads to their wealth not being equal. So all the things are interrelated with each other because they're not consuming well, they are not able to generate better. And since they're not able to generate better for themselves economically, they are not even holding good amount of wealth as well. So there also exists an inequality in the opportunities available, which is directly linked to social mobility, because obviously if they are not equally getting the opportunities as the other person is, so they will have unequal chance they will not be treated equally when it comes to improving their standards of living as well and that is why the social mobility will be reduced as well hence people born in disadvantageous households have lower chances of moving up the economic ladder so had they be given the social mobility or the opportunities of the social mobility equally then there definitely could have been you know a uh, greater chances that they would have improved or they would have moved upwards in the economic ladder the reservation system in india is one such example wherein we knew that you know there are people though that was not given for economically as such but of course economical backwardness also causes your social backwardness and vice versa as well and that is why reservation system was one step that was hugely or enormously taken to provide an equal level or you know the equal level of opportunities to all the individuals in the society but in the current situation does not really you know uh, seem to be yielding enough as we had actually expected 
because the covid also has aggregated the market inequality in the following ways firstly there are educational inequalities like access of online education was a significant deterrent and further it aggravated the learning gap of the foundational skills we know this for sure that when there was lockdown and the schools and colleges they all came upon the online platforms so definitely not every individual or every student in the country had equal access to the smartphones internet laptops etc and here at the very first you know in the wake only at the very beginning only itself there uh, we had the educational inequalities also it needs to be addressed with additional efforts since education serves as the prime resource for social mobility of course yes if you are not educated if you are not skilled then you already have cut down your chances of you know getting any positive social mobility so if at all we are looking forward to a society that has better chances of social mobility we need to make sure that the people living in that society are well educated and they are skilled at the same time then we have also various scarring labor markets so ever since the pandemic there has been a loss in the labor force participation as well because a lot of people had to actually move back to their hometowns there was also a problem of the spread of the covid-19 they all had to move back and that is why the labor force participation also declined severely specifically if we talk about the women because they especially had to stay back since the children now were at the at the home as well so according to the cmie which basically is Uh, you know uh, we have basically it's a center for monitoring indian economy so uh, according to this the same has fallen from 42.7% which earlier you know we used to have a labor force participation of 42.7% as per september to december 2019 to 40.2% in the time of uh, may to august 2021 also the unemployment rate has increased from 7.5% to 8.6% during the same period so this is a big big you know a gap that has come up and there has also been increase in the contractual jobs which indicates the absence of well paying stable and productive jobs now because when we talk about the contractual jobs definitely the workers uh, or the contractual workers they do not enjoy a lot of rights and benefits and that is why they are not even well paid as well they're not stable they're not you know you can't really count on to them for a long time and they're not even very productive jobs to so uh, if we talk about the way forward so this article says that uh, we need to have a swift return to higher growth trajectories like we had in the previous times and even specifically keeping the covid-19 in times we can have you know just like for example we had various portals that the government has come up with the you know portals for the organized for the unorganized sectors and for all these things for which the government has come up to make sure that these people are getting work in the right time then even flow of benefits to both uh, ends of the society so be it at the higher side or to the lower side the flow of benefits and facilities should be equal to both the sides and we should not you know the left unchecked the problems of the following nature will also increase like for example claims for higher taxation of the rich higher inequality and lower social mobility and political expediency must address such effects to avoid any kind of resistance so that is why we need to have an all encompassing and a multi faceted uh, you know solution to this in order to cure this problem now let's discuss the second article for the day which talks about evolution and framing of the indian constitution so the indian government has held a gala event in commemoration of the constitution uh, day celebrated on 26th of november so the uh, if we talk about this the framing of the constitution is the result of long years of struggle for freedom yes of course and alone the framing of the constitution took 2 years 11 months and 18 days and this is just the time when the framing had already begun now the right you know the demand for purna swaraj and all of this you know had started back in 1930s itself so the demand for making a constitutional committee was made in 1935 which however came into formation in 1946 the same was formed on the basis of communal representation we all know about that in which a mohammad ali jinnah had played a very important role then the constitution was completed in november 1949 and was adopted on 26th november of the same year the preamble of the constitution draws its inspiration from the objectives resolution of nehru and the constitutional committee was headed by dr b r ambedkar we all know that so the drafting committee which was one of the most important committees over there it was headed by dr b r ambedkar and dr ambedkar himself considered it to be surprising since he had only come to represent the depressed class of society since he had only come to represent the depressed classes of the society but all in all there was a total representation and which ultimately you know the indian constitution came out to be the largest written constitution of the world so if we talk about the uh, you know the talk about the executive legislature and the constitution so the speeches which were made on the constitution day of that is 26th of november invariably focus on the judiciary and specifically to be very exact on the supreme court which means that a very important you know a responsibility was laid on the show on the shoulders of the supreme court 
and the judicial accountability is one of the cardinal issues put out in the forefront every year. So uh, the present CGI, who is basically Justice uh, N. V. Ramana, believes that uh, the accountability mentioned in the Constitution of India uh, is more important for the legislature and the executive than the judiciary. So it is true that the Constitution refers a greater responsibility of accountability on the executive and legislature of India. So basically it says that ultimately the executive and the legislature also play a very important role when it comes to the accountability to the people. And the mandate of the judiciary is to do justice and hence it is an independent body. So basically uh, here, if we talk about this kind of interpretation of the constitutional provisions, so it says that the independence of the judiciary has been endowed with better or greater independence as compared to the other two segments that, are, that is the executive and the legislature. And the main responsibility of the judiciary is to do justice that is in time. And also it says that it would be an independent body giving complete justice as per also according to the article 142 of the Indian constitution. So in this regard, the doctrine of basic structure which was proposed in the case of Keshav Nandabharti protects the constitution from being mutilated by political agendas. And according to the CGI as well, the constitution had faith in the people that they would adorn to the bench to do full justice to their duties. And that is why it says that we should, in no matter any situation, the, the independence of the Indian judiciary should not be hampered, be it the cause be anything the cause, because ultimately we need to have judiciary as an independent body if we really want the right kind of justice to be delivered in the right time. So that was all for the day. We hope it was a good session for you all. Thank you so much for staying tuned with Law Seco. If you want to download the PDF of today's slides, please join our Telegram channel. The link is there in the description box below, or you can scan the QR code that you can see on your screens right now. Also, please do not forget to follow us on our Instagram channels. If you liked it, please subscribe to our channels and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much.